Hello everyone, John Odom, drum set percussion teacher here with Grew with Passion Drum Lessons. And I want to start off today by saying thank you to my new subscribers, for those of you who've just recently, and to all of my subscribers. Thank you all for, uh, for those of you who, who have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Um, I know that not everybody that subscribes plays drums. Uh, hopefully at least some of you guys do. And I hope that you find these uh, videos helpful. Uh, because I do teach. I'm a full-time drum teacher, and so that's the purpose of uh, filming these videos, is to help any drummer who watches this, maybe even a teacher, fellow teacher, to give you guys some ideas, because that's what we do. We're sharing the love of drumming, so uh, and that's to help each other just improve our playing and uh, become the best mu musicians we can be. So today I'm going to do a, a video. This is an idea that I came up with, and um, the Sometimes we get ideas out of necessity. I've got uh, two students who are currently working on songs. One is a, the song Amber by the band 311. The song is 83 beats per minute is a pretty quick uh, one-handed 16th note groove, okay? I've also got a student who's working on the song Brian Storm by uh, Arctic Monkeys. And that song is a two-handed 16th note groove at 160 beats per minute. Uh, both songs are challenging to play because of the fast tempo. Um, so I'm thinking about what can I do to help these students um, because both of them are having a challenge playing these songs and, and so uh, I have to think about what is the best way to help them. So I want to talk about this book that I use, Drum Method book. It's called Breaking It Down, okay? Uh, the author of the book is a drum teacher from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, his name is Kevin White. Okay, I will include the link uh, for the book on this video. Okay, and uh, he has a whole series of books. Uh, he's a very uh, prolific uh, author for drum books. Um, and this is an excellent book because the name of the book is Breaking It Down. It does break down drum grooves to help especially beginners when they're first learning coordination get their hands and feet working together. It's well written, very clear, excellent exercises. I highly recommend it for uh, both drummers and drum teachers as well. So I mentioned that I've got students, two students who are playing fast 16th note groove songs, right? So in this book, and I'm not gonna show the uh, uh, page for copyright reasons, but again, I will include the link. And, uh, but it's page 30. It says lesson four snare drum 16th notes. So thinking about how to best help my students with these exercises. Now, um, I'm pretty sure the intention of these exercises, and, and I've been using this book for probably a couple of years now, been using it for a good while. And uh, I believe the intention of most of these 16th note exercises are to be played two hand. And up until recently, that's what I've been doing. Okay, maybe 110, 120, 130 beats per minute playing these exercises with two hands. And it recently occurred to me, well, we are not locked in or restricted to only playing these exercises with both hands. Why can't we play these one-handed? Now, if you're going to play 16 notes with one hand versus both hands, you have to slow the tempo down right? Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So that's actually idea number one that I came up with. Now I'm going to say something about playing on the practice pad. Here's what I've been telling my students lately, that your top drummers and teachers play on practice on practice pads. I'm going to use three of my favorite drum teachers as an example, okay? Rick Latham, Miss Dorethea Taylor, who's known as the godmother of drumming, and Bruce Becker. And the reason why I use them as examples is all three of these teachers have filmed videos of playing on their practice pad on the countertop in their kitchens. Okay, so if the top drummers and teachers practice on a practice pad, everybody needs to. Now, with that being said, so this is a very practical, very useful practice tool, right? So we want to practice these with the metronome. So exercise one, 
is a two measure exercise. Again, this is on page 30 in the Breaking It Down book. And it's a measure of eighth notes, measure of sixteenth notes, right? So here's what I recommend. One measure with the right hand, or one time, right? So it's two measures. First time with the right hand, then with the left hand. Vice versa, it doesn't matter which hand you go first with, right? But to work both hands, like so. Now, use this with the metronome, starting at 65 beats per minute. Depending on where you're at with your experience, you might be able to go faster or slower. Okay, going to adjust the tempo as needed. Also, I recommend you when you start to, let's say you start at 65, then you want to go up to 70 beats per minute. Go up, in, if you can, in 5 beat per minute increments. I wouldn't recommend going from 65 all the way up to 80. You want to make sure you can play at all different tempos. Okay. Um, also, when you're doing this, you don't want to be... You know, straining, tensing up. Some of my students, when they're especially the younger students, when they're trying to play fast, that's what I get. You're just, you're gripping the stick really tightly. You're driving the stick into the pad. It's not rebounding. That's not going to work. Okay. Loose, relaxed grip. Using fingers. I keep emphasizing that. Fingers and wrists, but you really got to use fingers for speed. Okay. Uh, with these one-handed 16th note grooves, you got to use fingers, right? So here it is at 65 beats per minute. Well, one moment. All right, 65 beats per minute. Here we go. Three, four. One and three and three and sixteenths. Left hand. Sixteenths. Again, right hand. Sixteenths. Left hand. Now, with this online metronome that I'm using, they do have subdivisions you can set up as quarter notes, eighth notes. I'm using quarter notes right now, 16th notes. It's up to you which subdivision you want to use. I'm just going to keep it simple for now and just use the quarter notes. All right. Um, I'm not going to go through all the exercises on the page. Exercise three is one measure. It's two beats of eighth notes, two beats of 16th notes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and raise the tempo here. We're going to go up to 70 beats per minute. Okay. It's going to be played just like this. Two. recommend playing these several times. A lot of times I like to play these exercises eight times. Um, so you know, even the first exercise, which is a, again a two measure exercise, eight times at 16 bars, right? Uh, but at least at least play them eight times. Um, you can play them more if you want. Uh, every All six of these exercises on this page do have a repeat sign, so you need to repeat it. Um, but you need to replay these several times, okay? Um, I'm gonna go move on down to exercise five. Now exercise five is three beats of 16th notes and then a quarter note on beat four, it's played like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four, okay? Again, one handed. Yes, we can boost the tempo up, play these with both hands, okay? But I really believe this is a really good way to, to work on your hand technique, okay? Um, so I'm going to boost the tempo up. I'm going to go to 75 beats per minute now. And here's exercise five on page 30. Two, three, four.
when you're practicing with the metronome and you need to practice with the metronome so you can keep track of your progress. If you're just, you know, grinding it out, grind, you know, trying to get it to, to play, okay, but you don't know how fast or slow you're playing. Um, so it's always a good idea to use the metronome so that way you can measure your progress. You can keep track of your progress. So that's three of the six exercises on this page. So that's that was idea number one I came up with. Now, part two of the idea, I realized, and of course I already know this, this is a practice tool. You are never going to perform live. If you play in a band, you play in, you know, in a recital, uh, if you play in band in school, you're never going to perform on a practice pad. This is a practice tool. Like I said earlier, a very necessary and useful practice tool. But you're not going to perform on this, right? So, what I, the idea that I came up with is like, you know what? You need to practice this on your hi-hat. Let me say this. Whether you have an acoustic kit, whether you have an electric kit. And I, got, I have students who have both. Whichever kind of kit you have, you need to practice this because when you're playing a groove, these 16th notes are either going to be on your hi-hat most of the time or your ride cymbal. Okay, so we're going to play this again. Go back to exercise one. I'm going to stay at 75 beats per minute. I'm going to play one time with the right hand, one time with the left hand. Now, for right-handed drummers like myself that are out there, that play cross-handed, you might be wondering, well, why do you need to play these left-handed on the hi-hat? Well, I mentioned my student who's playing uh, Brian Storm, which is 160 beats per minute. Your right hand might be able to keep up with that, but if your weaker hand is not able to, you're in trouble. And you've got to build up that weaker hand to get to that point. So you've got to work both hands. It can't be just, oh, let me just work my strong hand to make it stronger while your weak hand never <laughs> improves. You actually, we actually need to work on our weaker hands more and get them more even with our stronger hand. So this is a good way to do this. So can we do extra, extra exercises, play extra measures with your weaker hand? Great idea. Cool thing about doing this on the hi-hat, this is a direct application to the drum set. This is the surface you're going to be playing this on. So that's what I like about this exercise is, is you're, you're not, yes, on the, on the pad, very important. But apply it to the drum set. Play it, practice it on the surface you're going to play on. So it's going to be just like this. 75 beats per minute. Two, three, four. we can do this with all the exercises right um, all six exercises are very helpful let me go ahead and show you exercise three on the high end okay that's the two beats of eighth notes two beats of sixteenth notes and I'm going to bring it up to 80 beats per minute just to make it a little more interesting okay here we go also too, I always tell my students when you change tempos, um, you don't have to jump right in, right at the very end, you know, the first bar. You can actually give it a few bars, give it a minute or so. Listen to your new tempo because see, you've gotten used. If, you, if you're, if you're let's, let's say you're playing at 70 beats per minute, so you're in tune with 70 beats per minute. So when you increase the tempo, then you're, you, you need to give your brain a moment to say, oh, okay, we're playing faster now, we get used to that. Also, many of you will find that your strong hand can play faster than your weak hand. It's the case with me, okay? Right hand's my strong hand, left hand's my weaker hand. So my right hand can go stronger for a longer, or go faster for a longer period of time than my left hand, okay? Uh, again, gotta work that left hand or that, whichever, your hand is weaker, right? 
And if you're one of those fortunate drummers that doesn't really have a strong hand, well, you're, you're lucky because most of us have a strong hand. We can, right? Um, but you practice this anyway. Because if you've got two strong hands, you want to keep those hands strong. You want to keep them fast. You want to keep them flexible. Uh, you want to always be able to, to play at these faster tempos, right? So this is 80 beats per minute, exercise three. Here we go. technique always being aware of your rebound okay don't lift your six too high i've got a few students young student okay six seven years old they want to play way up here and you can't it doesn't work so uh, you know if you're finding that your sticks are rebounding really high you got to get them under control okay light touch i'm not saying we play super soft super quiet no high will cut through not hitting that hard, you don't need it that hard. Okay, so um, but rebound, using the rebound. Also, too, keep in mind on the hi hat. Now, sometimes certain styles of music you need to play with the shoulder of the stick on the edge of the hat, but you're not going to get rebound doing that. Okay, um, tip on top, you're going to get more rebound. So it depends on the song. Okay, depends on the feel you're looking for. Um, but the tip on top, that's where you get most of the rebound. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and show you exercise five again. Actually, I'll go to exercise six. I'll go to the last exercise on the page. That's counting one E and a two and three E and a four. Okay. Two, three, four. practical exercises again the idea of applying these directly to the drum kit okay is very helpful now we can also apply these to the right symbol okay so if you're going to play over on the right symbol all right if you've got an acoustic ride um you gotta remember to let the sick read okay. Might want to use French grip. I don't use French grip all the time. It depends on what I'm playing. Okay, actually, if I'm playing bell hits, and some of the time, some of the music that I play, sometimes I am playing bell hits and on the bow of the cymbal. A lot of times I'll actually switch over to American grip. Okay, um, but not every, I don't play bell hits on every song. So if I'm just playing just straight eighth notes or sixteenth notes or maybe even quarter notes, I usually use French grip. Okay. Um, I don't dictate to my students what grip to use. I let them use the grip that works best for them. Um, I will guide them if I can see, if I see that the grip isn't working well, then I'll suggest, hey, why don't you switch to this, something else, right? Um, but you gotta use rebound. Rebound is the, is the key. Uh, rebound is the drummer's best friend, okay? Uh, but yeah, you can also definitely practice these exercises on the ride cymbal as well. So. Hope you find this video helpful. Hope you find it uh, uh, as, a, as a useful tool to build your hand technique, to build your hand speed, to build your control, stick control, okay? You can also move this around the kit. It doesn't only have to be on the hi-hat or the right symbol. You can move it on the toms, um, play it on the snare if you want. Uh, but one-handed versus two-handed, uh, eighth and sixteenth notes. Uh, so currently I am enrolling new students for lessons. I'm currently teaching at Flamenco del Sur Arts. We are a music and dance school. We are located at an Narcusi Business Park. We're on Narcusi Road in Orlando. Uh, I'm also teaching with Lessons in Your Home. I do in-home lessons, both with Lessons in Your Home and also teach privately. I teach students uh, directly. 
Uh, I also teach online. So even if you don't live here in the Orlando area, uh, I do Zoom lessons right here. So I do offer Zoom lessons as well. Um, whether it's drum set or even if you're working on snare drum or some percussion instruments and in, in band class in school, uh, I can also help you out with that. Uh, so the information uh, for to sign up for new lessons will be on the video. Also, I will include the link for the Breaking It Down book. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and keep on drumming.